be overwhelming and they can drown us, oh Lord God. But Lord, we can look above the waves and trust in your love that whatever comes in our lives, you will keep us in peace. When we call upon you and we set our eyes upon you and we set our eyes above the waters, above the waves, oh God, of problems, struggles, life's pains, we will always be at peace in our hearts. And so, Father, we thank you because we can rest in your embrace. And we are yours and you are ours. study one character of the Bible again yet again and uh, this man of God is uh, I consider him an iron man superhero ito an iron man of the Old Testament he was a champion he was a superhero he did great things you know as a man of God so 1 Kings chapter 18 are you, are you with me? Please follow me and kayo na pong umintin at umunawa kasi we are going international. Meron po tayong mga nanonood na taga Taiwan, taga Japan, taga iba't ibang bansa. So 1 Kings chapter 18, let's start with verse 1. Don't have your Bibles with me, please just intently uh, listen and follow. After a long time in the third year, the word of the Lord God came to Elijah. Go and present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the land. So, ang araw ng no, no mga panahon pong yun, there was drought and famine. And now the Lord is commanding Elijah to go and present himself to King Ahab because he is now ready to send rain on the land. Verse 2. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria. And Ahab had summoned Obadiah who was in charge of his palace. Obadiah was a devout believer in the Lord. While Jezebel was killing off the Lord's prophets, Obadiah had taken a hundred prophets and hidden them in two caves, fifty in each, and had supplied them with food and water. Ahab had said to Obadiah, go through the land to all the springs and valleys. Maybe we can find some grass to keep the horses and mules alive so we will not have to kill any more of our animals. So they divided the land they were to cover Ahab going in one direction and Obadiah in another. As Obadiah was walking along, Elijah met him. Obadiah recognized him, bowed down to the ground and said, Is it really you, my lord, Elijah? Yes, he replied. Go tell your master Ahab, Elijah is here. What have I done wrong, asked Obadiah, that you are handling your servant over to Ahab to be put to death? As surely as the Lord your God lives, there is not a nation or kingdom where my master has not sent someone to look for you. 
And whenever a nation or kingdom claimed you were not there, he made them swear he could not find you. Verse 11, But now you tell me to go to my master and say, Elijah is here. I don't know where the Spirit of the Lord may carry you when I leave. If I go and tell Ahab and he doesn't find you, he will kill me. Yet I, your servant, have worshipped the Lord since my youth. Haven't you heard, my Lord, what I did while Jezebel was killing the prophets of the Lord? I hid them, a hundred of them, one in each and every cave, fifty in each one. And, he, and I supplied them with food and water. And now you tell me to go to my master and say, Elijah is here, he will kill me. But Elijah said, As the Lord Almighty lives whom I serve, I will surely prepare myself to Ahab. I will surely present myself to Ahab today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Okay. Titigil po muna ako sapagkat ang scenario, the scenario of what we are reading is that Elijah is now commanded by God to go to King Ahab. Ahab was the present king of that time and Ahab is married to Queen Jezebel. So prior to this chapter, Samaria and all of the land are suffering in famine. There was drought and famine. Nagugutong po sila. People are getting hungry and people are getting thirsty because there is no food, there is no water. But now God has said, I am ready to send rain on the land. Handa na akong magpadala ng, 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 ng ulan sa buong uh, kakalupaan. But Elijah was uh, meeting Obadiah and Obadiah was a faithful servant of the Lord and Obadiah was so afraid because he said, I will go to the king to tell him that you are here but then when he looks for you and he cannot find you, he will surely kill me. Okay, that was the concern of Obadiah. But Elijah said, no, I will present myself to King Ahab. Okay, tuloy po natin sa verse, tw uh, verse, okay, verse 22. Then Elijah said to, uh, okay, uh, verse, uh, let's go back to 17. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, troubler of Israel? You and your father's family, you have abandoned the Lord's command and have followed the Baals. Now summon the people. So Elijah is now confronting the king Ahab. Okay? So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him about Elijah, and Elijah went to meet King Ahab. And... Uh, King Ahab said to him, Are you the you? You are the troubler, you are the troubler of Israel. And uh, Elijah replied, But it's not me who is the cause of trouble, but you and your father's family, because you have abandoned the Lord's command and have followed Baal. Baal is the is a pagan god. And uh, Ahab is a king of Israel. But he married Jezebel, and Jezebel is a non-believer. So that is the consequence of marrying someone who is not the same faith as you. Because it's either you, you will bring him or her to your faith or he's, got, he's going to bring you to his or her faith. But napakasaklap kasi in, in Ahab's case, Jezebel brought him to Baal worship. Okay, so... All of Israel were rebelling against God because they have turned their back against God and worshipped Baal. Okay, so now, Elijah is face to face with King Ahab. Elijah said to them, Elijah said to the people, now, Elijah is talking to the people of Israel, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. So the people are in dilemma because suddenly, Elijah appeared. And he was confronting the people, you are worshipping a false god. So to decide ye this day whom you shall obey, whom you shall worship, whom you shall follow. 
Baal or the God of Israel. But the people said nothing. And so, kapag ganito, na-undecided yung mga tao, kailangan merong drastic action. Sabihin nga ko natin na drastic action. Sometimes when people are apathetic, wala silang, wala lang, dead ma lang, minsan kinakailangan mo talagang bigyan ng isang matinding sample. Di ba? Samplean na yan. Amen? At alam ng Diyos yun kasi matigas na ang puso eh. The hearts of the Israelites have hardened because of backsliding. They have worshipped Baal for so long. Sumamba na sila sa Diyos-Diyosan. Tumalikod sila sa tunay na Diyos. They have turned their back against God and they have worshipped the pagan god Baal for so long that their hearts have been hardened. And uh, situations like this call for dire situations. Okay? Dire... Uh, dire solutions and uh, in the time of of uh, Elijah this is what happened Elijah went, bef went before the people and said if the Lord is God follow him but if Baal is God follow him but the people said nothing so, verse 12 22 then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophet left but Baal has 450 prophets Get two bulls for us. Let them choose one for themselves and let them cut it into pieces and put it into the wood but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of, the, of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is God. Then all the people said, what you say is good. And I just said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bulls and prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Oh, Baal, answer us. They shouted, but there was no response. No one answered, and they danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah begun, began to taunt them. Hey, shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he is in deep sleep or in deep thought or might be busy. So shout louder. Maybe because he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. Midday passed and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. They came to him and repaired, and repaired the altar of the Lord, which was in ruins. Elijah took twelve stones, one for each tribe descended from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Your name shall be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it, large enough to hold two seeds of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, and laid it on the wood. Then he said, fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did it the third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that these people will know that you, O Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back to you again. And then the fire of the Lord fell from the heavens and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also lit up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. And so Elijah commanded them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let them go away. And they seized them, 450 prophets of them, and slaughtered them. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go, eat and drink, for there is a sound of heavy rain. 
So Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed up to the top of Carmel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. And then they looked towards the sea, and a mist came back. And so Elijah said, Go and tell Ahab, Hitch up your chariot and go down, because the rain is coming. And so meanwhile the sky grew black, and the clouds grew black, and the wind rose, and a heavy rain came on, and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Nakuha po ba natin yung kwento? Kaya ang tawag ko kanina, si Elijah is such a man of God that was used by God in Old Testament to do his great wonders. What was the scenario? Ahab made a challenge to the to, to the 450 prophets of Baal. He said, You Israelites have backslidden too long. Matagal na kayong nag-backslide, matigas na yung puso nyo. Hindi na kayo basta-basta makakabalik. Kailangan sa inyo drastic solution, drastic ang makita nyo na, 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 na bagay para kayo bumalik sa Diyos sapagkat mahaba na, kalyado na eh, yung mga puso nyo. Kaya po, ang ginawa ni Elijah, kinausap niya si Ahab, magpadala ka ng 450 profeta laban sa akin. One versus 450 prophets. Na-imagine nyo po ba? Elijah versus 450 prophets of Baal. And he said, get a bull and we will have a sacrifice. And, uh, Whoever can let fire come down from heaven, call on his God and let fire come from heaven, then that is the true God. So, the 450 prophets of Baal went on to have their ritual. Sila po ay nagpaikot-ikot. Sila po ay nagpakumanta-kanta. Lahat ng all day they have been calling on their God to send fire, but there was no fire. Amen? There was no fire. All day they were calling on their gods to send fire on the bull, on the sacrifice, but there was no fire. Amen po ba? And uh, that was not only the thing. They were slashing their themselves. Sinusukatan nila nila yung sarili nila para lang dumating yung, yung apoy. Kasi nga, yun ang hapon eh. Sino ba nang makapagpabagsak ng apoy? Yun ang totoong Diyos. Amen? And Elijah was taunting them, make your voices louder. Your God might be asleep or uh, he might be sleeping or he might, you need to awaken him. Amen? Ang sabi po ni Elijah, you have to shout louder because your God might be busy or doing something. Amen? Lakasan niyo yung boses niyo, lakasan niyo yung sigaw niyo kasi baka hindi kayo naririnig ng Diyos niyo, tulog. O kaya abala. O kaya busy. <laughs> Amen? Pero, wala pong, wala pa rin, wala pa po rin nangyayari. Ang sabi doon, all day they have been dancing and doing rituals calling for the fire from heaven to come down but no fire came. Amen po ba? Amen. But when Elijah prayed to God, and this was his prayer, the Lord is God. Answer me, O Lord, so that these people will know that you, O Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. That was just a simple prayer. Elijah prayed, God send fire so that these people will return to you. God send fire so that these people will believe that you are a true God. And what happened po? May kita po natin sa verse 38, Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice. But prior to that, may partida si Elijah Hindi la, he put 12 stones as a symbol of the 12 tribes of Israel but not only that he commanded the people to pour out water on the wood and on the burnt sacrifice on the on the sacrifice on the bull 
Di ba dapat ang ibubuhos mo doon gasolina? Di ba? O gas. Partida, tubig. Amen? It was water that He commanded to be poured out on the wood. Amen? Oh, pag, pag yung tubig ba, mapapa, mapapaliyab mo ba yan? Mapapaliyab mo ba ang tubig? Hindi, di ba? At saka nung unang mga panahon yun, napakahalaga ng tubig. Kasi nga, ano eh, tagto yun. There was drought and famine in the land. So sabi siguro ng mga tao, pinagbubuhos yung mga, sayang yung tubig. Sayang yung tubig. Ba't binuhos? <laughs> Ba't binuhos doon? Ininog na lang sana natin. Naghihirap nga tayo. Bawat patak ng tubig, napakahirap eh, i-produce. Tapos ibinuhos lang ni Elijah doon. Amen? Ibinuhos lang doon sa sacrifice. Doon sa, da, sa altar of sacrifice. Pero this is to show God's power and wonder. Amen po ba? Paano mo mapapagliyap ang tubig? Hindi yun. Imposible yun. Amen? Yung tubig, pamatay ng apoy. Di ba? Kapag tap tapos tayo mag-ihaw-ihaw, binubuhusan natin ang tubig para mapatay yung apoy at safe. Di po ba? Pero iba kay Elijah. Hindi pa wala pang apoy, pinabuhusan na niya ng tubig. Amen? Sabihin natin, partida. Amen? Partida, partida pa to sa mga ano, yung mga propeta ni Baal, nag, nag, nag-iikot, nagsasasayaw, nagre-ritual, kung ano-ano. Tinatawagan nila yung Diyos nila, sabi ni Elijah, lakasan niyo pa ng tawag. Baka tulog yung Diyos niyo. Hindi kayo marinig. O kaya baka busy. May pinagkakabalahan at hindi kayo marinig. Hello? Amen. Amen? May sense of humor din si Elijah, di ba? Amen? Inasal. <laughs> Inasal. Eh, asal talo yung mga ano, yung mga, yung mga propeta ni Baal. Pinaghihiwa ngayon yung mga sarili nila. Hanggang sa magsiduguan na sila. Amen? Nagdudutugo na sila. Wala pa rin apoy. Amen? Tumuwad-tumuwad kasi at lahat, tumalong-talong na sila at lahat, sumayaw-sayaw, kumanta-kanta, at naglaslas na ng mga sarili, wala pa rin apoy. Hello! Amen! At ang sabi ni Elijah, lakasan niyo pa yung tawag niyo, lakasan niyo pa yung dasal niyo, dahil baka hindi kayo marinig ng Diyos niyo. Amen? At ganun na po ang ginawa ni Elijah. Ako naman! Tapos na ba kayo? Are you done? Are you finished? Is it my turn? Okay, it's my turn. Okay. Pour out four gallons of water on the altar. Not gas. Not gasoline. Amen? Water. And then, they put 12 stones as a symbol of the 12 tribes of Israel representing each tribe that has backslidden from God. Lahat sila nag-backslide. Sabihin na natin lahat, nag-backslide. Amen. They have turned their backs from God. And so, what is the purpose of this event? Bakit naghamon si Elijah? What was the reason why Elijah challenged all the 450 prophets of Baal to, turn, to return the hearts of, the, of Israel to God? Amen? And sometimes, it is not enough that you tell people, go back to God. They will not. They will not. Amen? Because man's heart is naturally and instinctively hard. Matigas. Amen po ba? May kalyo na nga yung iba, hindi na nakakaramdam. Amen? And so, in, in, in dire situations, God has to do something drastic. And God used Elijah to show that to the people of Israel. Napakatagal na nilang nag-backslide and so they had to do, they had to see something. Meron dapat silang makita. Amen? They had to see something great, something wonderful, something miraculous, something out of the ordinary. And pouring water on an altar for it to burn with fire is out of the ordinary. Do you do that? Hindi, di ba? You don't pour water on wood for it to be lit up by fire. Amen? 
But Elijah did exactly that. Amen? So, at Mount Carmel, he had the duel with the 450 prophets of Baal with all the drama. Amen? With all the drama surrounding it. Amen po ba? Amen? Sinakyan niya kaya yung mga propeta ni Baal. Amen? Nakipag-asaran pa siya. Amen? At sinabing, uh, lakasan niyo, baka hindi kayo naririnig ng Diyos niyo. So, and what happened when, when, when uh, Elijah prayed to God sa so verse 20, uh, Okay, verse 33, he said to them, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering of the wood. And then, do it again. Okay? Nag-pour na sila ng water, inulit pa ulit, pinapuhusan pa ulit ng tubig. Talagang binahan ng tubig yung, yung wood. And then, they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did it the third time. How many times na pinabuhusan ng tubig? Not one, not twice, but thrice. Tatlong beses pa talaga, partida. Sabihin natin lahat, partida. Okay? And then the water ran down around the altar and even filled the trends. And at that time, the sacri of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and pray O Lord God of Abraham Isaac and Israel let it be known today that you are a God of Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command answer me O Lord answer me so that these people will know that you are Lord you are God and that you are turning their hearts back to you again and then verse 38 the fire of the Lord came down from heaven fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the soil, and also the lick up the water in the trance. And when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Amen? When people saw this, ano po nangyari? May bumaba ba ng apoy sa langit? Meron ba apoy sa langit? Nasunog ba yung burnt offering? Nasunog ba? Nasunog ba? Amen. Amen. That's why Prophet Elijah is called the prophet of fire. Because he let fire come down from heaven to burn the sacrifice offering. And this, when people saw, when the Israelites saw, when the backsliders saw, they turned prostrate before God and said, Oh Lord God, you are the God of Israel. And then they believe. And then they turn their hearts towards God. Amen po ba? At sila po ay nagbakbalik loob sa Panginoon. And then what happened? He commanded all the 450 prophets to be slaughtered. He killed them all. The prophets of Baal. Why? They have to be killed because they are leading people into idolatry. Amen? Kinakailangan nilang mamatay yung mga 450 propetang yun. Kasi sila ang nagdadala sa mga tao sa idolatry. Pagsamba kay Baal, pagsamba sa Diyos Diyosan. So they need to be killed. No remnant should remain. Amen po ba? Amen. And so, Elijah did a great thing. Sabi nun natin lahat, Elijah did a great thing. It was amazing. Amen po ba? Dakila. Dakila pa yung nangyari? Saan kayo nakakita ng apoy na bumaba sa langit para i-consume yung, yung wood at saka yung altar? Amen po ba? Si Elijah lang po ang nakagawa nun. So, pero tingnan natin anong nangyari sa ch chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. Now, Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. 
When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servants there. And while he himself went a day's journey into the desert, he came to a broom tree or a juniper tree and said, Take my life! I am now better than my ancestors. Let me die. Hello. So chapter 18, you see an Iron Man Elijah, a superhero, a superman, amen? A man of fire. But then, suddenly, sa chapter 19, ano Elijah yung makikita natin? Jezebel sent a message. Kasi kwineto ni King Ahab, patay na lahat ng propeta mo. Pinatay ni Elijah. Nagpano na siya ng apoy. Gumawa siya ng dakilang himalat lahat ng tao. Sumamba na sa Diyos. Hindi na kay Baal. Amen! Nagkaroon ng revival sa buong kapuloan. Nagkaroon ng revival sa buong kalupaan. Amen! There was a revival. A great revival because of what Elijah did. Amen! People saw fire came down from heaven. Fire consumed the altar of sacrifice. Nobody has seen that before. And that was enough for people to turn their hearts towards God again. Amen? That was enough to turn, return the people to worship the, the one and only living through God. Amen? That was enough. Amen? And the people worship God again because they saw a miracle. They saw a great thing. They saw fire come from heaven. They saw Elijah, the prophet of God, the God sent in Amen? Who did a miraculous thing, calling down fire from heaven, and it came. Amen po ba? Amen. Amen. But then, Ahab went to his wife Jezebel and told him about what happened. Wala na, wala na tila sa propeta mo. Patay na lahat. Slinoter ni Elijah. And what did Jezebel said? King Ahab's wife, he said, May the gods deal with me, be it ever severely, if by this tomorrow, I do not kill you. I'm paraphrasing. In other words, hanapin niyo si Elijah at sabihin niyo sa kanya saan man siya makarating, hahanapin ko siya, papatayin ko rin siya, kagaya ng ginawa niya sa mga propeta ko. Halinaw po ba? That was the message. And when Elijah heard the message, Elijah was afraid. Sabi yung natin lahat, Elijah was afraid. He ran for his life. He ran for his life. Tumakas, tumakbo. When he came, he went to Beersheba and he left his servant there. Iniwan niya yung kanyang, yung kanyang alala, yung kanyang servant. And he went through the juniper tree in the desert and he said, Take my life, O oh God. I am no better than my ancestors. Let me die. Can you see the stark contrast? Hindi man lang, hindi man lang nag-antay, ha? Hindi man lang nag-antay. 18 to, chapter 18, chapter 19. Ganun na agad yung scenario. Hindi man lang chapter 18, tumakbo ng chapter 28 naman, di ba? Ang dami sanang nangyari. Di ba? Pero hindi. Just right after the Mount Carmel incident, the duel at Mount Carmel where he called on fire from the heavens, we can see here a, a discouraged Elijah, a depressed Elijah, an Elijah who was chickened out on his faith, an Elijah who ran at hindi lamang tumakbo ng iwan pa. Amen? Iniwanan niya yung kanyang servant. Hello? Can you imagine this Elijah of the Kings chapter 18? Na mighty, superhero, dahilang bagay ang ginawa. Tapos ngayon, he was afraid. Sabi mo natin lahat, he was afraid. He was afraid. Kanino siya takot? Kay Jezebel. Ay, sino si Jezebel? Asawa. Ahab's wife. Babae nga si Jezebel, eh, di ba? Babae lang natakot si Elijah. Hindi nga siya natakot sa 450 na propeta. Amen? Elijah was scared. Elijah was afraid. Where is the Elijah of 1 Kings 18? I don't know. Saan napunta? Yung Elijah ng 1 Kings 18. 
mighty man, the mighty man coming down from the air, calling down fire from heaven. Amen. Not afraid to face 450 prophets of Baal. Amen. And he was not afraid, but with one woman called Jezebel, he trembled and he flee. Siya po ay tumakpo. And he was so discouraged and he was so depressed that he wanted to die. Hello? After, you can see in 1 Kings 18, he was on the mountain top of victory in Mount Carmel. He was elated. Amen? He was... Uh, the epitome of success. But suddenly, in 1 Kings 19, Elijah was in the depths of despair. He was not in the mountain type of victory, but he's now in the valley of defeat. And he is no longer elated, but he is deflated. And he wanted to die. He wanted to kill himself. He was so depressed. Sabi no na na depressed. He was so discouraged. Sabi no natin lahat, discouraged. What a roller coaster of emotion. Amen? He was at the height of success and suddenly he went down into the valley of darkness and defeat and despair. It could happen. It could happen to somebody like Elijah, a great man of God. That is why we are not surprised if kumente mabalitaan Ganon. He is so successful. He is so wealthy. He, he has done a great things. He has achieved a great things. Why did he kill himself? Why did he commit, commit suicide? Amen. Walang dahilan para siya magpakamatay. Amen. Why? Depression knows no gender. Depression knows no position. Discouragement is no respecter of person. You can be wealthy. And you can be poor, you can be sick, depression can touch you. And Elijah was no exemption to that. He was doing great. He was at the pinnacle of his uh, ministry. Amen. He has just done a great and mighty thing. And then suddenly he found himself in under the juniper tree, wanted to end his life. Wailing in despair, trembling in fear. He went as far as Beersheba. Beersheba, kung baka ang Beersheba, yun na yung pinaka-southernmost part of Israel. Yun na yung wala nang sibilisasyon. It's desert all in there. And uh, that's how he was so afraid that he traveled to the southernmost part. Doon na sa wala nang sibilisasyon and he left behind his servant. Why did he left behind his servant? Baka ayaw niyang makita siya nung servant niya na Madi discourage na siya. So, akin lang yun. Ang, uh, my theory is that maybe he didn't want his servant to see him at his weakest point. Maybe he didn't want his servant to see him at his lowest point. Or maybe he didn't want his servant na madamay pa. Diyan ka na lang. Kasi ako, give up na. Tatakbo na. Tumak at tumakbo nga po siya. So we can see here that all the way to Beersheba, he fled and he was running away as far as possible. He left his servant because maybe also he had no plans of coming back. Huwag ka lang sumama sa akin because I have no plans of coming back. I'm totally running away. So you stay behind. Don't follow me. Amen? Huwag mo akong sundan. Ayokong makita mo ako na mahina. Ayokong makita mo ako na pasuko na. Ayokong makita mo ako na nagigive up na. Amen? And uh, to his credit, maybe that was his reason why he left behind his servant. For psycho sa, sa psychology, ang tawag dyan, withdrawal. Withdraw, nag-withdraw ka. Nagpapakalayo-layo ka hanggang sa hindi ka na makita. Amen? Nagpapakalayo-layo ka hanggang sa para hindi tinatakasan mo. You are withdrawing and you are denying, denying. And so, but when he was finally exhausted, you know, he quit running. He sat down under the juniper tree 
First Kings chapter 19 verse 4 and then God asked him and, and then asked God to let him die. Sabi niya, God, let me die. <laughs> Pagkatapos niya patayin yung 450 prophets, gusto naman niya, siya naman ang mamatay. Amen? Hello, mga Elijah. Minsan, ano, galing ka sa victory. Oo, galing ka sa victory talaga. Or, talaga nagre-rejoice ka. Tapos biglang merong isang, sa isang iglap lang, depressed ka na, parang gusto ko lang mamatay. Si Elijah nga nangyari yun eh sa kanya. Elijah to ha? Prophet of fire. Amen? But he was not exempted from depression and discouragement. But his depression did not come in an overnight, ano lang, nangyari lang na from nowhere. It was an accumulation of everything that has happened in his life. Sometimes sabi nga ni Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Amen? And if you are not ready to take on that responsibility, you can get overwhelmed. And just like Elijah facing all these prophets of Baal in front of many people, it was such a great thing. Pero pag nag-iisa siya, nasa-feel niya, para siyang empty, para siyang exhausted. Amen? At andiyan pa yung pressure na may nagtatangka sa buhay niya. Okay? So, so sa 1 Kings 19.4, sabi niya, I've had it, Lord. I've had it. I'm done. He said, take my life for I am no better than my ancestors. Ito yung exact words ni Elijah. Kasi, sabi, sabi sa kanya ni, ni, ni Lord, eh, nandun siya sa Juniper tree, eh, pagod na pagod na siya, and he was talking to himself. Sa, ang dami niyang, ang dami niyang uh, nakikipag-usap siya sa sarili niya. And, and sabi ni Lord sa kanya, why are you here, Elijah? 1 Kings 19.4 and sabi ni Elijah I've had it take my life for I am no better than my ancestors Elijah felt like not, wala, it, he was empty after the victory most of the exhaustion na kanyang naramdaman ay eto na nagkahalo-halo na eh biro mo lahat ng mga pinagdaanan niya ay uh, nangyari at pinagdaanan niya but you know, ano pong makikita natin doon? Tingnan natin. Sabi ko kanina, this thing did not happen overnight. It did not come out of nowhere. There must be a reason. There must be a root. Saan nagmula itong ano ni Elijah? Hindi pwedeng bigla na lang siyang na-depress eh. Hindi pwedeng bigla na lang siyang nagsabi, gusto ko nang mamatay eh. Amen? There must be a reason and there are four truths that we will see upon the life of Elijah. Number one, yung binasa natin kanina, 1 Kings 19.3, Elijah was frightened by Jezebel because Jezebel said, I will kill you. I will go after you. I will find you wherever you are. So there was a threat and Elijah was afraid. Amen? Nakapasok ang fear. Sabihin natin lahat, fear. Elijah was frightened by the threat of Jezebel. He had to run for his life. He did not run from 450 prophets of Baal, but he ran with a threat coming from a woman named Jezebel. He was so scared that he ran through Beersheba, which is the end of civilization. Kumbaga sa basilan na yun ng, ng Pilipinas. Sa pinakadulo ng, 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 ng Pilipinas, sa southernmost part. But like Elijah, we do. Amen? We fear. We fear. We, we have a lot of fears in our hearts. Natatakot tayo baka hindi natin mapag-aral yung anak natin. Natatakot tayo baka hindi tayo magkaroon ng magandang kinabukasan sa pamilya natin. We, matatakot tayo baka hindi tayo makatapos mag-aaral, pag-aaral. Ano yung kinakatakutan natin? Kalabitin mo yung katabi mo. Ano yung kinakatakutan mo? What do you fear most? What is, what is, what, what is it that you fear most? Amen. Do you, what, what, ano yung kinakatakutan mo? Loneliness? Natatakot ka to grow old alone? Do you fear that you will not be able to send your kids to good school and let them you know, finish a good education? 
Alam niyo po ba yung mga hapon? Ang yayaman nila, they're so rich and wealthy. But the greatest fear that they have in their heart is not being able to send their kids to school. Tatanda ko silang hindi nila pag-aral yung mga anak nila, ang yayaman nila. Di ba? Meron silang mga stable na mga trabaho. What are you most afraid of? That you will not be able to finish in school and uh, disappoint your parents? What is it that you are most afraid? That you will not have a fat bank account? That you will not be able to fulfill your dreams? Whatever that is. Amen? You might be like Elijah, feeling something. Amen? That is not, hindi naman dapat katakutan. Amen? Jezebel was, Jezebel's threat was just a threat. It was a bluff. Amen? But Elijah has seen a lot in his ministry. God has saved him a lot of times. Amen? But with sudden, you know, lapse of faith, bigla siyang natakot. Hello? Amen? Bigla natakot. Ayun, iniwan ang pagpo-full time. Natakot magutom, natak natakot mag-fasting, natakot mag mag-sacrificio. Amen? Maraming kinakatakutan. Sabihin natin lahat, fear. So, Elijah was afraid. But, meron bang basis yung kanyang fear? Meron, kasi trineten siya, di ba? But a threat is always a threat and just a threat. Amen? Si Satan, hanggang pananakot lang yan eh. Sabi nga, di ba, roaring lion lang siya. But it can never bite you. Satan is just a roaring lion, you know, which is different from a biting lion. When you are just roaring, you just create noise and, you know, you instill fear in the hearts of people. But it's different when you can harm them and really bite them. But Satan's, yung pangil niya, his teeth were already crushed. Wala na siyang pangil. Kaya nga hanggang roar na lang siya. Amen? Hanggang, ganun lang. Pero hindi na siya makakapalakit kasi bali na yung kanyang pangil. Wala na siyang pangil. Amen. Amen. Dahil 2,000 years ago, binali na ni Jesus Christ yung pangil niya. Kaya hanggang pananakot lang siya, pero hindi na siya makakapalakit. Amen po ba? Amen. Amen. But Elijah was made to believe. And uh, he, he believed. So, he had fear in his heart. Number two, 1 Kings 19.4. Elijah had a negative perception of himself. Ano po ba ang sabi niya? 1 Kings 19 Okay, 19.3 Elijah was afraid and ran for his life when he came to Beersheba and he left his servant there. So verse 4 he came to a juniper tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Ano sabi niya? Wala akong pinag-iba sa mga ancestors ko. Pare-pareho lang kami losers. We are all losers. Amen? So he looked at himself as a loser. He looked at himself as a big failure. So na-cloud na yung kanyang perception. Hindi na niya nakita yung victory niya sa Mount Carmel. Nakita niya yung failure ng ancestors niya at, at yung failure din niya. Amen? So number one, fear. Number two na problema ni Elijah, he looked at himself the way he saw himself. Hindi sa pagkakatingin ng Diyos sa kanya, kundi sa pagkakatingin niya sa sarili niya. At ano ang pagkakatingin niya sa sarili niya? That he is a big failure just like his ancestors. She said, I am no better than my ancestors. Take me and let me die. Amen. Wala naman akong pinag, pinag iba sa mga ninuno ko. Pare-pareho lang kaming losers. So he looked at himself as a failure. Amen. Maliban siya, siya po ay nagkaroon ng takot. Siya po ay tumingin sa sarili niya, tinignan niya yung sarili niya na talunan. Amen. Once na tinignan mo ang sarili mo na talunan, talunan ka nga. Kasi yan ang tingin mo sa sarili mo eh. Pero pag tinignan mo ang sarili mo ayon sa pagtingin sa iyo ng Diyos. Amen? Na ikaw ay matagumpay, na ikaw ay pinagpala, kagaya ng ginawa niya sa Mount Carmel, if he only saw what God has done in his life, then he would not have 
thought of himself as a big failure. Amen? Amen. But, you know, sabi po niya sa 19 verse 4, I am a big failure. 1 Kings 19 verse 4. He had a negative perception or opinion about himself. He felt like he was incompetent. He was, he was, he was no good. And he was no better than his ancestors. Amen po ba? So, yun po yung number two. Number three. Tinan po natin sa 9 verse 5. When he lay down under the tree, he fell asleep. And all at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. Okay? He fell asleep. Sabi mo natin lahat, he fell asleep. Number three, na problema ni Elijah, aside from fear, aside from looking at himself as a big failure, number three, he was so fatigued. F-A-T-I-G-U-E-D Fatigue Sobrang physically and emotionally exhausted Amen Sobrang ano nag, Sobrang pagod Yun, tama po si Ate Julie Napagod na siya He was so physically and emotionally drained Amen Kaya nga po sa mundo Meron po tinatawag na work-life balance. You should have a work-life balance. You don't overwork yourself or else you will die. Amen? Amen? Mamamatay ka. Mag magkakaroon ka ng physical exhaustion. You will get sick. Hindi ka na kumakain. Ah, but hindi ka na kumakain kasi kinakailangan kong tapusin ito eh. Amen? Praise God, masipag ka. Pero hindi yung dahilan para pabayaan mo ang sarili mo. Amen? Praise God kasi ma, ma, you are hardworking, you are diligent, amen, you you work so hard, but that is not reason and excuse for you to overwork yourself, to overdo it. Anything that is beyond, amen, anything that is overdone is not good. Lahat ng bagay na ginawa mo ng sobra ay hindi tama. And maybe, just maybe, Elijah was into that stage. He was so physically exhausted. He was so emotionally exhausted that he just wanted to give up. Amen. Amen. Kaya sabi niya, I, I, I want to die. He was so... And because of his exhaustion, siya nga po ay nakatulog. Amen. He fell asleep. And God let him asleep. Amen. So ito na po natin sabi doon, when he was lying down under the tree, he fell asleep and all at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then he slept again. So, <laughs> sobrang pagod niya. Ano? Diba? Pagkising niya, may kumalabit sa kanya, sabi niya, kain na. Hello? May cook. May waiter pa nag-serve sa kanya. Ang sarap ng pagkain niya. A cake of bread and water. Amen? Sino gumawa nun? Si Lord. Pero alam niyo po ba? Si Lord, nagtanong siya eh. Nagtanong siya, sabi niya ganun eh. Okay. Si ang sabi ni God sa kanya, so he look he got up and eat. Sige, ituloy po natin yon. And drunk, and then he lay down and slept again. And then the angel of the Lord came back for the second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. Okay? Pero sa verse 9, so he, sa verse 9, sabi ng Panginoon, Then he went into a cave and spent the night, and the word of the Lord came to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Si Lord na yung nagsasalita. Anong ginagawa mo dito, Elijah? Hindi ba alam ni, Eli ni Lord kung ano yung nangyari kay Elijah? Alam niya. But the Lord has the business of asking questions. Kagaya na sinabi niya kay Adam, Adam, where are you? Si Adam, nung kumain siya nung, nung prutas. Where are you, Adam? Hindi ba alam ni Lord kung saan nagtatago si Adam? Alam niya. Sabi niya kay Moses, Moses, ano yung hawak mo? Hindi ba alam ng Lord kung ano yung hawak ni, ni Moses? It was a staff. Amen? Na pwede niyang gamitin para hatiin yung dagat na pula. Ano sabi niya kay Cain? Where is your brother? Hindi ba alam ni Lord kung saan 
kung nasaan si Abel. Patay na si Abel, pinatay ni Cain. Pero God wants to elicit something. Meron siyang gustong palabasin. God wants you to talk. God wants you to pour out your heart. And ang anong sinagot ni Elijah when God when Elijah said and when God said, "What are you doing here, Elijah?" He replied, "I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, they've broken down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. Now I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me." Okay, dami si Nabi. Alam mo ba na ako na lang natitira? Pero sa totoo lang, hindi siya lang. Di ba, may 100 pa. May 100 pang itinago si Obadiah sa mga kweba, 50 sa bawat kweba. Amen? Kaya hindi totoo ang nag-iisa na lang siya. Hindi totoo ang ako na lang ang nag-iisa. Hindi. Minsan nakala mo nag-iisa ka. Hindi. Minsan nakala mo mag-iisa ka nang lumalaban at wala na ang Diyos. Hindi totoo yun. Amen? Hindi totoo yun, Elijah. May 100 ka pang kasama. Hindi totoo yung mag-isa ka na lang lumalaban sa buhay. Amen. Kasama mo ang Diyos. Amen. But God wants you to vent out. Amen. Ano sabi ni ang ano ano sabi ni Elijah? I am the only one and they are trying to kill me. And the Lord said, "Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by." Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind after the wind there was an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake after the earthquake came fire but the Lord was not in the fire but after the fire came a gentle whisper when Elijah said when, when God said to him when Elijah heard this, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? The Lord asked, I, What are you doing in Elijah? He replied, I have been very serious for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant and broken down your altars and put your prophets to death. And now they are trying to kill me. And the Lord said to him, Go back. Go back, go back the way you came. The Lord said, Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus when you get there. Anoint Hazael, king of Aram. Anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shepha. Okay. Napaka overwhelming ng mga revelation. So, we find here Elijah at the lowest point of his life so depressed, wanted to die, wanted to kill himself, but God was there. God let him go through the process. Amen? Hinayahan ng Diyos. Hindi yan sinabi ng Diyos na, ang, ang sabi lang ng Diyos, what are you doing here, Elijah? Hindi sinabi, alam mo, hindi dapat ganyan ang magsalita ang mga propeta. Dapat ang mga propeta, ganito, ganito, merong mga, merong mga sets of rules and standards. But God allowed Elijah to go through the process of depression and discouragement. Amen? God wanted him to process himself. And God simply said in a whisper, in a gentle whisper, What are you doing, Elijah? Dumating daw ang wind, ang earthquake and fire, but God was not in there. God came to Elijah through a gentle whisper. Kung minsan naghahanap ka ng mga dakilang bagay sa buhay mo, gusto mo makakita ka ng mga bagay na great and mighty and miraculous. But sometimes hindi yun ang gusto ng Diyos. Gusto na lang ng Diyos na maramdaman mo siya sa isang gentle whisper na nagsasabi, Anak, kumain ka na, eto o tinapay. Nagpadala ako ng anghel, pagod ka lang. You need to re-energize and revitalize and refill yourself. And so here's a cake, here's a bread, and here's a glass of water. Amen? And then he drank, and then he ate, and then he slept again. And God let him sleep. Amen? God let him sleep. God let him eat. God let him go through that. And God let him vent out his frustrations. Kaya sinabi ng Diyos sa 
Maria, what are you doing here? That question was the one that initiated him to talk out. Amen? Ilabas niya kung ano. Sometimes it helps. Amen po ba? Amen. Go find somebody who is not judgmental. <laughs> Humanap ka ng tao, hindi ka i-judge. Pababayaan ka, nasabihin kung ano yung gusto mong sabihin. Kagaya ni Lord, pinabayaan lang niya si Elijah. Hindi ni rebuke ni Lord si Elijah. Amen. Hindi sinabi ng Lord, Elijah, sa Kings 18, gumawa ka pa ng himala, nakipaglaban ka sa 450 propeta, tapos ngayon, ganyan na sinasabi mo, gusto mo nang mamatay? Wala kang narinig sa Lord ng gano'n. Ang sabi ni Lord, kumain ka, Elijah. Eto o, tinapay. Pumangalawa pa, nagluto uli yung anghel, pinakain uli siya. Tapos natulog uli siya. Pinatulog siya ng Panginoon. Amen? At ang sabi, tumayo ka dyan, darating ang Panginoon, dumating ang hangin, dumating ang kulog at kidlat, dumating ang malakas na lintol, wala doon ang Diyos. Amen? Dumating ang apoy, wala din doon ang Diyos. Amen? Nasaan ang Diyos? In a gentle whisper. Minsan gano'n ang Diyos sa buhay mo, kaya lang hindi mo maramdaman eh. Hindi mo maramdaman yung gentle whisper ng Panginoon kasi ang gusto mo, kulog, kidlat, apoy. Yung mga spectacular. Sometimes God works in those ways, but most of the time, God comes in a gentle whisper. And you just have to be sensitive to feel that, to know that. Amen? But Elijah was busy venting out. And God allows you to vent out. Okay lang. Sabi ko nga sa turo ko nung nakaraan, di ba? It's okay. It's okay not to be okay. Kagaya ni Elijah, God gave him a room. Amen? To talk out and vent out his frustrations. Amen? Amen. At sa ano ay matuto tayo sa Lord. Si Lord is never a judgmental God. Hindi siya nagja-judge. Amen. Kahit na si Elijah, grabe yung yung ano niya, yung fall niya. <laughs> Di ba? From from Carmel to Valley of Death, Valley of Depression. Amen. God is every reason to rebuke Elijah because he has just witnessed the greatest miracle, you know, fire coming down from heaven. But hey, here you, you find him so depressed and wanted to kill himself. But anyway, ang Panginoon po ay uh, God knows that Elijah needed time to rest and relax and re-energize. And so God allowed him to go to Beersheba. Minsan, God allows you to go and flee. Iwanan yung mga Iwanan yung mga taong they get into your nerves. Amen? Iwanan yung mga, kung minsan inaalaw ng Lord yun eh, na mag-isa ka lang, iwanan mo yung mga taong, ano, yung alam mo yun, yung nag-aanoy sa'yo, yung mga breaker mo, yung bumabasag ng puso mo, yung nalanakit ng damdamin mo, sometimes God allows you to flee from them, go to Beersheba, you know, find a juniper tree and just kausapin mo yung sarili mo at pakipag-usap ka sa Diyos. Lord, ayoko na. Lord, grabe, lahat ng mga pinagawa mo, ginawa ko. Pero ngayon, gusto nila pa akong patay, mag-isa na lang ako. Mag-isa na lang ako, sabi niya. So he was, but God was allowing him to do all those things. Binibigyan siya ng Panginoon ng pagkakataon na, uh, you know, maranasan, maranasan to go through the process of discouragement and depression. And uh, sometimes, it's good if you talk about it. Amen? Si Elijah, nag, ano siya, nag-vent out siya ng frustration niya. At minsan po na, nakakatulong yun if you vent out. And sometimes, crying helps too. Amen? Nakaka-release ka. Pag umiyak ka, di ba? Siguro hindi lang sinabi ni dito sa Bible, pero siguro may kasamang iyak pa yun. Hindi lamang uh, frustration, but uh, also Elijah was in such a dire 
uh, situation. He needed to rest, he needed to relax for a while, so, uh, you know, sometimes depression and discouragement results from physical exhaustion. Yung na, kasobrahan ka na ng pagod. Kasi inabuso mo na yung sarili mo. You've overdone everything, na-overwork ka na, naging workaholic ka na, napabayaan mo na yung sarili mo, napabayaan mo yung katawan mo. So you are physically exhausted, kasama na dyan ang emotional exhaustion. Amen? And so kapag dumarating sa ganun, God allows you to run and flee and go to Beersheba and find a juniper tree where you can, you know, have a heart-to-heart -heart with God. And God will allow you to vent out your frustrations. And then after you vent out your frustrations, God has a cake for you. Amen? Bibigyan ka niya ng tinapay, bibigyan ka niya ng tubig. Para ikaw, ano? Ma-restore, ma-re-energize, ma-revitalize. Amen? And then, sabi ni ng Panginoon. So, so, doon sa ating inano kanina, si Elijah was looking at himself with as a big failure, Tapos he was so fearful and he was so hopeless. So First Kings 19.10, he was so hopeless. He said, I am the only one left and they are trying to get me. So he felt so alone. Sometimes you feel so alone. But in reality, you are not alone. God is with you. Amen? But sometimes you just feel alone, kagaya ni Elijah. He felt alone, hopeless, and has negative expectations. He was so paranoid. Amen? Sabi niya, nag-iisa na lang ako. Amen. Pero sa totoo lang, hindi naman siya nag-iisa. Meron pa siyang 100 na kakampi. Kaya lang, tinakbuhan nga niya, tinakasan nga niya. Amen? Amen. Pero sa oras na to, sabi niya ganun, I am alone and they are trying to kill me. And so he was looking at his life from a very different perspective. He was looking at his life from a perspective of someone who is hopeless. Amen? Tinitingnan niya yung sarili niya na wala na siyang pag-asa. And so, sabi, sabi niya ngayon, I am, I am alone. But in reality, he is not alone. And sometimes you feel like you are alone. Sometimes you feel like nobody is helping you or nobody is beside you. It's nobody go is going through you, through that journey. No. Maybe you are just like Elijah, having a juniper tree experience. But so allow yourself to go through that, but after that, let us follow kung ano yung principles na tinuturo ni Elijah dito. How, to, how, how, do, how did Elijah get out of depression? How did Elijah get out of discouragement? So, number one, he allowed himself to get a rest. Take time off. Amen? Na time off siya. Pinabayaan siya ng Lord. Pinakain siya, di ba? Pinainom siya. Para ano? Ang una mong i-restore yung physical na katawan mo. Amen? First thing that you have to take care of is your body, your, your physical body. Take care of your body. Sometimes your physical condition, when it is terrible and bad, pupapasok na yan sa psychological, mental, and emotional. Minsan ang root noon ay physical exhaustion. Amen? And so after that, you become so depressed and emotionally drained. So, take time off, breathe, and uh, rejuvenate yourself. Kagaya ng ginawa ni Elijah. Eat. Eat the right kind of food. Amen? Sleep. Have enough sleep. Amen? Ngayon, wala nang pasok. Bawi-bawi na kayo. Pwede na kayong matulog ng ano, mahaba-haba. Kasi wala, tapos na exam. Amen? Para makabawi kayo. Amen? And then, uh, relax. Amen? Mag ma do some recreation na hindi naman makakasama sa katawan nyo at saka sa pananampalataya nyo. Amen? So, hindi masamang mag-relax. Mag Take time off. Amen? Because sometimes, yung pong uh, root ng ating exhaustion ay yung physical na pagkapagod. So, uh, you know, Elijah was very busy attending to the ministry, but he neglected himself. Elijah was a great man of God, busy with all those miraculous things, but then he neglected his personal needs. And so now, God is attending to him, feeding him, 
Amen? Helping him, rejuvenating him, restoring him, sending him an angel para siya ay makakain at siya po ay ma-restore physically. Amen po ba? So when we are physically exhausted, then, tuloy-tuloy na yan, eh, domino effect. Spiritually, emotionally, mentally, lahat na damay-damay na. So we should find time to re-energize and physically restore ourselves. Otherwise, burn out ang labas. Amen po ba? Ganun po ang nangyari kay Elijah. At ganun ang nangyari sa maraming tao. Nagtataka ka kung bakit depressed ka, malungkot ka, nap napaparanoid ka. Eh kasi inaabuso mo yung sarili mo eh. You are overworking yourself. Amen? So take time off. Next, ano po ang sumunod na, 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 na kinakailangan gawin? Kagaya ni Elijah, let it out. Talk about it. Go through the process. Amen? Pag-usapan nyo yan ng kaibigan mo, ng pastor mo, ni sister, ni brother, ng nanay mo, ng tatay mo. Ano man ang bumabagabag sa'yo, ilabas mo. Kung tinanong ng Panginoon si Elijah, when God asked Elijah, what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah said a lot of things. Oh, I'm no better than my ancestors. I want to die. Amen. I was faithful. I did everything that you did, to, that you wanted me to do. But then in the end, I was left alone. I'm the only one fighting. And now they're trying to kill me. Ang dami niyang sinabi. Pero okay lang. At least nailabas niya kung ano nasa loob niya. Di ba? Di ba? At praise the Lord kasi sa, sa Lord siya nag, naglabas. Si Lord hindi judgmental. Sabihin mo sa tabi, katabi mo, si Lord hindi judgmental. Kaya dapat tayo hindi rin judgmental. Amen? Pag meron nag-open sa atin, pakinggan natin. Kahit na minsan nakakainis yung pinapakinggan natin kasi paulit-ulit na lang. Diba? But God was so patient with Elijah. Amen? God was so gentle with Elijah. Amen? God was so merciful with Elijah. Amen? God put up with Elijah. Amen? Amen. Pwede sabihin, pambira ka, tanda mo na, propeta ka pa. <laughs> pambira ka, nagpadala ka na nga ng apoy mula sa langit, tapos ganun, iyak iya ka nga, uwi, 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 uwi ka. God could have said that to Elijah, but did he say that? No. Isa na ang lagi sinasabi, why are you here, Elijah? Kasi gusto ng Panginoon, ilabas niya kung ano mo talaga yung nasa loob niya. At inilabas nga niya, nakatulong ba? Nakatulong siguro. Amen? Kasi pagkatapos na, okay na siya eh. Tingnan mo. So God wants you to talk through your frustrations just like what He did to Elijah. He allowed Elijah to vent out his frustrations. When Elijah was saying, I am no good. I am a loser. I am a failure. Pinakinggan na lang siya ni Lord. Hindi siya ni rebuke ni Lord. Amen? Pero tayo, isa, dalawa pa lang nasasabi ni Brother Cecil, ang dami na natin sinabi. Hello? Guilty? As charged. <laughs> Hello? Si Lord, inalaw niya, hinayaan niya si Elijah. Amen? Nung, nung si Elijah nagsasabi ng kanyang mga sama ng loob at mga inalakit, Amen. Kasi iniwanan na raw siya. Nag-iisa na lang siya lumalaban. Amen. At wala rin siya pinagkain pa sa kanyang mga ninuno. Hindi siya ginads ng Panginoon. Amen. God asks questions. Though He knows that He knows the answer. Alam ni Lord kung bakit nandun si Elijah but He was continually asking Him in a gentle whisper, Why are you here, Elijah? Why are you like that, my child? Bakit ka ganyan, anak? Ano ba ang problema mo, anak? Halika, pag-usapan natin. God was so gentle with Elijah. And God listened non-judgmentally as Elijah poured out his feelings, his anger, his bitterness, his self-pity. Amen? Nag nagkakaroon na siya ng self-pity you know he was having self-pity and he was already having these negative thoughts in his mind he forgot totally everything that he has did for God <laughs> amen but God allowed him God let him through it 
God let him through the process. God let him talk through the process of his discouragement. Amen? Because if you shut down people from talking, they will withdraw at sasarilinin na lang nila yon. Mahirap yon. Pag sinarili nila. Amen? Yung parang feeling nila wala namang nakikinig sa kanila. Parang feeling nila wala namang gustong makinig sa kanila. Kaya ang nangyayari, kasi nasya shut down ka agad, hindi lang sila nag-open. Sinasarili na lang nila. Delikado yun. Kaya doon nagkakaroon ng mga ng mga in the end, eh, hindi magandang mga kaganapan. Grabe, nung isang araw may nabasa ako, 10 years old, nagpakamatay doon sa Benguet. 10 years old, ha? Pabata ng pabata. Yung mga nade-depress. Bakit nagpakamatay yung isang pong taong gulang ngayon? Ano ba problema nun? Ha? Ano ba problema ng mga sampung taong gulang para magpakamatay, di ba? Praise the Lord. So, Elijah was made, you know, to go through the process of his uh, agony and, uh, and uh, anger, bitterness, jealousy. Amen? He, God let, he, let him vent it out and talk it out. And maybe God even let him cry. Amen? Pinabayaan siya. Sometimes crying helps. Amen? Pag umiyak ka, naiiyak mo na, magaan. Di ba? Di po ba? Tama? Okay. So, ang dinesign ng Lord ang luha, may purpose yan. Amen? Hindi naman binigyan ng Lord ang luha ng walang function eh. Nang walang gamit. Yung luha, nakakatulong para gumaan ang pakiramdam. Kaya okay lang umiyak. Umiyak ka kung kinakailangan umiyak. Amen? Amen? Hindi, pero, hindi ibig sabihin umiyak ka ay bakla ka. O hindi ibig sabihin umiyak ka ay mahina ka. Amen? Because crying helps. It can ease your burden. God made it a resource for release. A means of release. Crying. Tears. Amen? So yun ang function nun. And as you talk to others, don't forget to talk to God. Pagkatapos mo mailabas, yung mga dapat mong ilabas kay brother, kay sister, na ang tiyaga namang nakinig sa'yo, huwag mong kakalimutang makipag-usap din sa Diyos. Sapagkat higit sa lahat, ang Diyos ang makakatulong sa'yo, ang makakadamay sa'yo. Amen? Hindi mo kinakailangang magpakamatay. Hindi mo kinakailangang ma-depress and totally go down spiral in your life. Amen? Kung alam mo na ang Diyos ay kasama mo at tutulong sa'yo. Amen po ba? Amen. So, God will not judge you. God will, you know, well, will continue to understand you because Elijah even accused God eh. Sabi niya gano'n na, I have been faithful to you but you, you, you know, you abandoned me. I'm the only one left. I'm the only one fighting. But, you know, God didn't say, Elijah, you should not talk like that. You are a prophet. You are a man of God. You know, you should not talk like that. That's so immature. Amen? Hindi po sinabi ng, ng, ng Panginoon yun. But, you know, he didn't make him feel guilty or rebuke him. But then he said, Okay, Elijah, you eat. You sleep. You relax. So God allowed him to do that. Nagkaroon siya ng me time. Nagkaroon siya ng Bill Shiba experience. Nagkaroon siya ng Juniper Tree experience. But after that, ang sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, Get up! Amen? Tapos na yan. <laughs> Get back to life. Amen? Bumalik ka na sa buhay mo. Malakas ka na! Kumain ka na! Uminom ka na! Nakatulog ka na! Handa ka na ulit! Amen! Bumalik ka na! Get back to mainstream. Get back to your life. We have lots of things to do. Eto, iaanoint mo yung bagong king. Iaanoint mo si Elisha. Iaanoint mo yung successor mo. Hello? You have a lot of things to do, to accomplish. Amen? And so God said, get back, get up, and get back to your ministry. Now you are revitalized, rejuvenated. You are restored. You had enough sleep. You ate. Amen. The angel cooked for you. 
and I have comforted you and I have made myself available to you to comfort you and now you are ready get back to ministry get back to mainstream get back to your life Amen the Beersheba experience is over so ganun po ang buhay ang buhay ni Elijah na gusto rin ng Panginoon na maranasan natin Elijah paid attention to the negative events in his life and God allowed him to but after that God is saying hey Elijah it's now time to get back to positivity remember the Mount Carmel duel and the Jezebel threat you know lahat ng yun ay wala sapagkat ang lahat ng yun ay kasama, sa lahat ng yun ay kasama mo ako. Amen po ba? Amen. So Elijah had it all wrong in his perspective. In his perspective, he was a loser but in God's perspective, he is a winner. He's a man of God. He's a prophet of fire. Amen? Amen. At ganun din po sa atin. We needed to know that because Elijah is an epitome of a person who was used by God mightily and effectively but was prone and vulnerable to discouragement and depression. So Elijah is no different from us. Amen? We could learn from him. Pagkatapos ng mga dakilang ginawa ng Panginoon sa buhay niya, he just went downward spiral because of depression and discouragement. But God allowed him to go through that process and then afterward, God said, get up, get back to ministry. Kung babasahin po natin sa huling mga talata, the Lord said to him, go back to the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael, the king over Aram. So, back to business. We have a lot of anointing to do we have a lot of king to anoint and we have Elisha to anoint as your successor. So Elijah was an epitome of a man of God who was not exempted from discouragement. But after that, he went back to ministry. Siya po ay nagpatuloy. He went on with his life. He started working again. He became busy again. He anointed a new king for Israel. He anointed Elisha. And at the end of his life, at the end of his ministry, at the end of his, of his career, he went out with a big bang. Ano pong nangyari? Merong whirlwind chariot of fire na bumaba. Amen? Para kunin si Elijah at inangat siya ng chariot of fire. Amen? Nakita siya ng mga tao. Grabe, no? Ang buhay niya talaga punong-puno ng drama. Punong-puno ng spectacular uh, events. Amen? And he was taken by a whirlwind of fire and the chariot of fire brought him bodily. Kaya hindi po namatay si Elijah. He was raptured. Na-rapture si Elijah. He did not go through death. He was taken bodily to heaven. Amen? That's how God loves him. Despite his vulnerability. Despite na nakita yung weakness and frailty niya. Ang Diyos hindi nagkulang sa kanya. Dahila pa rin yung exit niya. Amen? Amen. Elijah was coming. Okay, Elijah, maybe you're too, too tired and old. It's time to go. I'll get you. Pero not without drama. Not without spectacular show. Because he was really, parang greatest showman. Di ba? Parang greatest showman. Masyadong spectacular yung buhay niya. And he went out in style. Hello? You know, he, he conducted his ministry with great spectacular events, spectacular show of miracles and power. Amen. He was the only one who brought fire from heaven. He was the only one who went a duel with 450 prophets of Baal. But despite his greatness, amen, the Bible showed him as a vulnerable man. A man who fell into the deepest despair into the valley of misery and frustration and fear. Amen? He was shown to be a great man, but he was also shown to be a man who feared a woman. He was trembling. He was in fear. He saw, he saw himself as a big failure. Although men's people saw him as a big success because of his Mount Carmel experience. Amen? But when at the end of his life, God was true to, God, to, to Elijah. 
Amen. With great show of a spectacular miracle, he was taken by a whirlwind of a chariot of fire and he was taken to heaven, body and soul. He did not die. Kaya nga, in these last days, it will be Elijah who will be one of the three prophets who will come to preach the gospel. Amen? Para sa great tribulation. Sapagkat si Elijah ang hindi nakaranas ng kamatayan. Kaya babalik siya dito. At ang isa pa ay si Moses. Eh, si Moses, hindi nakita yung bangkay niya kung saan siya nilibing eh. Moses was also like Elijah in his old age. Ang daming mga blunders. Nagpakita rin ng witness. Pero at the end of his life, you know, kinawaan siya ng Panginoon. Parang si Elijah. And so, maybe Elijah was done with his ministry. He was able to get back to the mainstream. He was able to anoint the new king of Israel, but he was also able to anoint his successor, Elisha. And Elisha did, you know, he got the double portion of, 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 of Elijah's anointing. Amen po ba? So, you know, if you feel sorry about yourself, go out there and find somebody kagaya ni Elijah he, nung na-realize niya na he, God never left his side, when he realized that God was always there for him, you know, he was willing to get back on his feet, you know, and go back to his ministry. And so he went back. Ang sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, it was a very, very specific command. The Lord said to him, go back to the way you came. Go back to the way you came. And so the Lord is telling to you, go back. Kalabitin mo yung katabi mo, go back. Amen? Go back. Whatever that means, go back. Go back to what the Lord has been telling you to do. Amen? Go back to what the Lord has been commanding you to do. The gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Maybe you have backslidden long enough. The Lord is saying, time is up. Amen? Go back. Bumalik ka na sa Diyos. Matagal ka nang nawalay sa Diyos. Matagal ka nang nagrebelte sa Diyos. Matagal ka nang hindi sumunod sa Diyos. At ito na ang pagkakataong bumalik ka sa Diyos. Amen. Go back to the way you came. The Lord is specifically telling Elijah. And so Elijah got up and he did what God wanted him to do. To anoint the kings of Israel. Ahab is gone. Jezre Jezebel is gone. Amen? And a new dawn has come. Amen? At ito po yung nakita ni Elijah when he went back. So he, Eli, Elijah anointed Elisha. And so he was able to do that. Amen po ba? Amen. Amen. So it is, better, it is better to look at yourself the way God sees you and not the way you see yourself. Elijah saw himself in the wrong perspective. He was seeing himself in the negative light. But God doesn't want you to do that. God wants you to continue to look at yourself as a winner, as somebody who is called by God to do wonderful and miraculous works. Amen po ba? Kagaya sa buhay ni Elijah. Hindi ko alam kung ano yung mga source of discouragement may for two consecutive weeks na, ganito yung pinapaturo ng Panginoon. You know, it's okay not to be okay. Hindi ko alam kung bakit. Amen? Maybe we are Marahil meron tayong mga pinagdadaanan. Hindi ko alam kung ano yung mga pinagdadaanan natin. Pero isa lang po ang sinasabi ng Panginoon. Minsan ba nadi-discourage ka? Okay lang. Don't feel guilty and don't condemn yourself. Because Elijah was a man of God. He was not exempted from being discouraged and from being depressed. But he did not remain depressed. He did not remain discouraged. With the help of God, you know, encouraging him, gently whispering upon him, Elijah, what are you doing? Elijah, what are you doing? And Elijah realized that, hey, amen, kinakailangan lang niya palang mag-re-energize sa Beersheba. After the Beersheba experience, he was a brand new man. Amen? Raring to go. Willing to go. Amen? Handang tapusin ang pinapagawa ng Diyos sa kanya. Amen? Sige nga po, palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Ngayon, meron bang pinapagawa ang Diyos sa'yo na sa isang punto ng buhay mo ay uh, tumakbo ka kasi natakot ka, 
or nakita mo yung sarili mo na kagaya ni Elijah, hindi ka nagtagumpay. You failed. Amen? Pero hindi totoo yun. Si Jezebel is a bluffer. Nagbabluff lang si Jezebel. Hindi totoo. Nakpapapatay ka niya. Amen? Huwag mong paniwalaan. Ang mga binubulong ng diablo sa'yo, napapatayin ka niya. Ito, bibigyan kita ng sakit. Mamamatay ka. Hindi ka na mabubuhay. Amen? Ito, magkakaroon ka ng mga ganitong uh, problema at hindi mo yan mapagtatagumpayan. You will be a loser and you will be a big failure. Amen? Pero sa buhay po ni Elijah, in that juniper tree, he felt the love of God. He felt the comfort of God. He felt the restoration of God. Amen? God was with him all the way. Sabihin mo natin lahat, all the way. And in that process of grieving, ano man ang pinagdadaanan mo ngayon, God is with you all the way. Kalabitin mo ang katabi mo, sabihin mo, God is with you all the way. You felt like he left you, but he never left you. Just like Elijah. Elijah felt like God left him. But no, Elijah was wrong. Because God never left his side. Amen, Amen po ba? Amen. In fact, when he was too exhausted, God prepared a cake of bread for him. And a glass of water for him. That's how God wants love. God that's how God loves you and wants to restore you. Amen? Gusto ko niyang pagpalain, gusto ko niyang tulungan, ano man ang pinagdadaanan mo. Kagaya ni Elijah, let us go through the process but after that, let's change our perspective. Ibalik mo yung dati mong ginagawa. Amen? Kagaya nung sinabi nung, 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 nung Panginoon kay Elijah, go back to the way you came. Balikan mo yung ginagawa mo. Then and only then, you can be restored totally, completely, absolutely. Amen po ba? Amen. Amen? At sa buhay po ni Elijah, ganun po yung naramdaman niya. He went back to the mainstream, he started working again, he became busy again, and he was able to finish his ministry in spectacular fashion. Amen? And he was taken by God to the heavens in style with a chariot of wind or chariot of fire. Amen po ba? Amen. So you might not be as spectacular as Elijah. You might not be a prophet like Elijah. But you are going through the process that Elijah went through. After a victory, parang ganito, ganyan tayo, di ba? Ito tayo ngayon. Kasi katatapos lang ng camp or anniversary. At saya-saya natin. Pagkatapos dumating yung problema, nakita natin yung sarili natin. Backslide ka agad wala na agad, hindi na nagpatuloy. Di ba gano'n maraming kristyano? Maraming kristyano, gano'n, ang hina. Pa parang uh, roller coaster, up and down of emotion. Pero purihin ng Panginoon kasi ang Diyos ma ma maunawain, mabait, at umiintindi. Amen po ba? Amen. Kaya sa buhay po nating lahat, ganito po ang nais ang Panginoon na maranasan natin. Amen po ba? Let us be like Elijah. Get back to our feet. Yeah, we might have our Beersheba experience, but, you know, we will not always be in Beersheba. God will call us again. Go back. Get busy. Finish the work that I have done, I have given you. Amen? And that's what Elijah did. Amen. Tayo pong lahat ay umukuha at pumikit.
Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me
see him. And the wind came, but the, in the wind there was no God. The earthquake came, and the, in the earthquake there was no God. And in the fire, the fire came, and the, in the fire there was no God. But God was in the gentleness of whisper. And the Lord is saying, my child, I have never left you. I have never forsaken you. I was always with you. Because I love you. And during the times when you were discouraged, I was there with you. Ready to comfort you and strengthen you. And even right now, if you need my strength, I am putting it out to you. Just like I have strengthened Elijah, I am strengthening you. Here's a big bread and a glass of water. Eat it. Drink it. And be strengthened once again. And go back to the ministry. More revitalized and more re-energized. Tanggapin mo muli ang ikalawang tawag ng Diyos sa buhay mo. The second calling of God is upon you. Receive it right now. God is calling you once again into the ministry. Receive it. Forget the past, sayeth God. Do not feel guilt and condemnation. I am restoring you. I am picking you up from the valleys of despair and discouragement, of guilt and condemnation. And now I am setting you free. Receive my love. Receive my forgiveness. Receive my strength. Receive my comfort. Receive my peace. Because I am a God who gently whispers into you, my child, I love you. And I have never forsaken you. I have always loved you. And never in a minute did I abandon you. And I will continue to love you. And I will continue to be with you. And you will finish the work that I have begun in you. Because I will be with you. Receive my love. Receive my strength. Receive my anointing. Receive my power. Receive my comfort. And receive my presence.
susugukan ng Diyos. Tumayo ka at bumangon ka. Bumalik ka sa iyong pinanggalingan. At gawin mo ulit ang pinapagawa ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Ituloy mo sapagkat ngayon pinalakas ka na ng Diyos. Elijah, dumating ka sa inyong Birsheba, kar karanasan niya na binigay sa iyo ng Panginoon. Ngunit hindi siya nagtatapos ang lahat sapagkat ngayon itinitindig ka muli ng Panginoon. God has anointed you once again today so that you can go on and finish your ministry. And God will call you once again in a greater ministry in a greater calling. Do not look at yourself as a loser, but look at yourself as a winner that God has chosen to fulfill His calling and His will. Huwag mong tingnan ang sarili mo. Nakagaya ng pagtingin ng Elijah, ni Elijah sa kanyang sarili na wala rin siyang magagawa. Kagaya ng kanyang mga ninuno. Pare-pareho lang kami, lahat kami backslide, tumba. Huwag, iba ka. Iba ka, huwag mong tingnan ang sarili mo na naging isang lumalaban. Marami kang kakampi. May isang daan pang mga propeta na nagtatago pero hindi yun nakita ni Elijah. Ang nakita niya ay nag-iisa siya. Kapatid, hindi ka nag-iisa. Marami kang kasamang lumalaban. Marami kang kasamang nananatili na tapat. Huwag kang susubo, huwag kang aatras, huwag kang bibigay. Magpatuloy ka sapagkat sa oras na ito at araw na ito, inanoint kang muli ng Diyos kagaya ng ginawa niya kay Elijah. Pinakain ka niya ng masarap upang ikaw ay lumakas. Pinainom ka niya upang ikaw ay makapagpatuloy. Binigyan ka niya ng muli kalakasan upang matapos mo ang ministeryong pinagkatiwala sa iyo. Walang sukuan, walang atrasan. Hindi ka magpapaksay at hindi ka mawawala at hindi ka na manghihina sapagkat sa oras na ito'y pinalakas ka ng Diyos, inanoint ka ng Diyos, itinaas ka ng Diyos, niyakap ka ng Diyos, pinagpala ka ng Diyos. <laughs>
susunod na araw ay patuloy namin lakaran ang katagumpayan. Salamat po, O Diyos. Salamat po, Ama. Kurapa siya. Come on. Utter a, so, a, a prayer of praise. Magpasalamat po tayo sa Panginoon. Pinakain niya tayo ngayon. Pinalakas. Pinainom. Hinayaang maglabas ng anumang nasa loob natin at tayo kanyang inabot. Itinindig muli, tinawag muli, inanoint na muli. And Father, let that anointing be sealed with the blood of the Lamb. Let that victory be sealed with the blood of Jesus. And let everything that has transpired this day, healing, victory, blessing, financial, emotional, mental, and physical blessing, let it be sealed by the blood of Jesus, O oh God. And let it push your people to do greater things, to do mightier things for your glory. Just like in the Old Testament, in the life of Elijah, let us do great and miraculous things. As, the, as Elijah has commanded the fire to come from heaven, Lord, we will lay our hands upon the sick and they shall be scoffed. They shall be recovered, O oh God. Gagamitin mo ang mga ordinaryong babae at lalaking dito, Panginoon, na magpapatong ng kamay sa mga may sakit at ang imala ay magagalap. Ang mga kanser ay mawawala at ang lahat ng sakit karamdaman na kanilang ipapanalangin o Diyos ay gagaling. Because you are a God of miracle and a God of miraculous power. Shikira babakanda. Elijah, maaaring hindi ka magpapababa ng apoy. Pero ikaw ay magliligtas ng kaluluwa. Magpapagaling ng may sakit. Magpapalakas ng mahihina. Mag-aanoid ng maraming Elisha na susunod sa yapak mo. Sikita ka. Kaya't walang lugar ang pagsuko. 
walang lugar ang pagtakbo, walang lugar ang discouragement. Minsan lang na-discourage si Elijah at hindi na ito na ulit. Bumalik siya. Pagbalik niya, mas malakas siya. Nag-anoint siya. Nag-anoint siya ng maraming Elisha na sumunod sa kanya. At ganyan din, din ang gagawin mo. Hindi ka na muli pang bubuk, babagsak. Hindi ka na muli pang tutumba. Hindi ka na muli pang tatagpo. Pagko sa harapin mo, kung ano yung pinapagawa ng Diyos sa buhay mo, at tatawag ka pa ng maraming susunod sa yapak mo. You will have many disciples before you. Magiging marami ang prayer warriors mo. Magiging marami ang mga intercessors under nyo. Magiging marami ang mga musicians under nyo. Maraming, magiging marami ang mga binabible study nyo. Palalaguin ng Panginoon. Sapagkat sa oras na di tinanggap mong muli ang hamon, binigyan mo ang sarili mo ng pagkakataon na tumindig muli, bumangon muli at gawin ang pinapagawa ng Diyos. Shikita Karamaka. Hallelujah. Kaya naman kulang ang salita para pasalamatan ng Diyos. Pasalamatan mo ang Panginoon. Thank the Lord for He has healed you, touched you, and made you a strong Elijah today. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Sige po, tayong lahat ay makakaupo. Nung mga nakaraang gawain po natin, mga sunod-sunod na, di ba po, Holy Week yun, uh, nagkaroon po tayo ng gawain yung Thursday and yung Friday. Alam ko po, karoon yun sa inyo nakapunta doon. At napakadaki ng bagay ang ginawa ng Lord nung araw nung Uh, Thursday dito sa, fr sa circle nung, nung Friday sa Antipolo at nung kina Saturday po nagpapasalamat po kami sa Lord sapagat uh, bagamat mahaba-haba yung biyahe nagpunta po kami sa Gimba ako po, ang uh, aking asawa si Apostol uh, Ricardo Carillo, kasama po namin si Pastor Jim Claude Arisa apat po kami na nagpunta sa Gimba at doon naman po magdadaos ng Uh, gawain ang man of God. Amen? So, yun po ay nangyari Sabado po at Linggo. Amen? So, nagpapasalamat lang po ako sa Panginoon kasi sa dalawang araw po na yun na gawain natin sa lugar ng Gimba eh, hindi po nabigo yung mga tao doon. Ang dami pong umatend. Amen po ba? Um, sa Saturday po, dalawa pong gawain doon eh. Isang umaga at saka isang hapon. Tapos Sunday, ganun din po, isang umaga, isang hapon din po. Kaya nabibless po ako nung araw na yon at nagpapasalamat po ako sa Lord Bagamat. Kasi sinasabi nila, pag buntis, ano, uh, hindi, hindi ka pwedeng bumiyahin ng malayo. Kasi, ano, uh, delikado. Pero sa, sa sarili ko, walang delikado. Kasi pagkasama mo si Lord, walang delikado. Amen po ba? Amen. At nung Sabado po, nagturo ang man of God, ang title po nung tinuro niya, dakilang bagay na ang ginawa ng Diyos sa KOJF at mas dakilang bagay pa ang gagawin niya. Una, umaga at saka hapon po, nagturo ang man of God. Uh, daming, uh, ang dami pong tao ang umaten at may bitbit na po silang mga pananghalian. Amen po ba? Kasi hindi na po doon uso yung uwian. Amen? Kasi po, yung lugar nila, napakalalayo. Mabihay ka ng isang oras, pauwi, tapos, ang, 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 ano pa, ang hirap po ng sasakay nila. Kaya ang ginawa po ng mga kapatiran natin sa lugar ng Gimba, nagdala na po sila ng mga kanya-kanya nilang pag-ain. Doon na po kami nag, nagtanghalian. Nag, Naghati-hati po kami. Talaga po napakasaya. At nung second service po nung Saturday, bumuhos po yung kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. Talagang hag, hagulgulan sila. Iyakan sila ng iyakan. Hindi mo maintindihan kasi... Si pastor, hindi naman siya nagpapatong ng kamay, pero yung maririnig mo, nagsisigawan sila. Ako po, ang ginawa ko po doon, kumakanta po ako, tapos si pastor uh, Danin po, tumutugtog. Isa po ako talaga sa grabe na ka-witness nung dakilang bagay na ginawa ng Diyos sa lugar ng gimba. At kung nung Sabado po, na-bless lahat sila, kinalingguhan, higit lalo kasi final final day yon last day ng 
gawain sa gimba. Umaga, sobrang kung na-amaze or namangha kami sa uh, power ng Lord ng Saturday morning and ng afternoon, mas grabe yung ginawa niya ng linggo ng umaga. Talagang ang ganda po ng turun ng, ng man of God doon, talagang tumuro po ng malalim sa aming mga puso. Ang tinuro po niya doon is yung nasa John 14.12 na ang sabi po doon, magagawa natin yung nagawa ng ating Panginoong Jesus at may higitan pa daw po natin yun. Kaya uh, personally sa akin talagang nagrema yun. Sabi ko, Lord, uh, ang galing mo. Sobrang, sobrang, sobrang dakila ng, ng, ng yung works na hindi namin talaga ma-explain ni ka kung papaano. Hanggang sa nagturo siya, tapos nagpastoral na, nag-aawitan lang kami, hindi, nag, nagpa-altar ko siya, tapos yung man of God, nakaluhod na lang siya dun sa likod ng pulpit niya. Tapos yung mga tao, kung grabe yung sigawan yung Saturday ng uh, morning and afternoon, mas grabe yung sigawan. Kasi kung mas marami po nung umati nung Sabado, mas dumog yung tao nung linggo. Kaya yung man of God, eh, hindi na niya magawang magpatong kasi wala nang sasalo sa kanila. Iwin po ba? Talagang... Sinabi ng man of God, kung gusto mong maranasan ng uh, kapangyarihan ng Panginoon, lapit ka at isang hakbang patungo sa harapan. Lahat ng, ng tao doon naglapitan sila sa harap. Tapos hindi alam ng lingkod ng Panginoon kasi kung papaano yung nagagawin. Kasi kahit leaders, leaders and attendees, lahat sila lumapit sa harap. Hindi alam ng man of God kung papaano niya pa, papatungan kasi pag pinatungan, automatic. Kahit hindi pa nga niya pinapa, pinapatungan eh. Amen. Sabi po ng asawa ko, si Brother Jobert, sabi po niya, um, nagtanong po kasi yung, yung mother po niya, sabi niya, kamusta daw po yung gawain sa gimba? Eh ako po kasi wala ko nun, silang dalawa lang. Sabi po niya, grabe yung ano, buhos ng kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. Kasi paano niya nasabi, siya po yung nagbivideo doon. Kaya nakakapture niya lahat, lahat talaga. Tapos ang man of God, iyak lang siya ng iyak sa likod ng palpit. Nakaluod lang siya doon. Yung mga tao, nakatayo lang sila ha, nakatayo lang. Bigla na lang silang matutumba, ma bigla na lang silang mapapaupo sa grabe na buhos ang kapangyarihan ng Panginoon sa lugar na yun. Kaya sabi ko, dapat ano, uh, nagdala kami ng mar maraming leader para mas nakatuwang sa man of God. Pero kahit hindi nakasama ang ibang leader, um, panoorin niyo po yung mga, yung mga, yung DVD, orderin niyo po yun. Talagang dun yun makikita yung sinasabi ko po o yung pinapatuto ko. Grabe po talaga yung ginawa ng Panginoon sa lugar na iyon. Hindi sila nabigo sa pagpunta nila doon at talagang ayaw pa nila kaming pahuin. Pati yung man of God, ayaw nilang pahuin. Kaya nagpapasalamat po ako sa Diyos sapagat bagamat malayo pero sulit na sulit po yung pagpunta namin doon. At lahat po ng mga kapatiran natin yung talagang bless na bless sa, uh, sa pagkilos ng Panginoon sa lugar na iyon. Umaga po yun ng Sunday. And after lunch po, natapos kami mga one po siguro. Nagtanghalian lang po kami then dumiretso po ulit kami sa isang as uh, gawain kasi para po sa inyong kaalaman every Sunday po, isa lang ang gawain natin sa gimba, pero hindi na ngayon dalawa na, amen po ba? palapakan niya kung muna natin ang Panginoon, kasi sa umaga, doon po tayo sa sa may church mismo natin and then pagkatapos ng umaga, may afternoon service po tayo sa may Saint, uh, sa may Saint John ang tawag po nila sa lugar na yun doon naman po nagagawain ng hapon kaya dalawa na po ang gawain natin, o, oh, Sunday service natin doon. At yung man of God, hindi rin po niya pinalampas, pinuntahan din po niya yung St. John. At yung sa may-ari ng bahay na yon nag-preach po ang man of God, more on salvation. Yung, alam niyo po yung may-ari ng bahay na yon may katandaan na siya. Hindi pa, hindi pa halos nag, uh, uh, nagpapasural, nagtuturo pa lang ang man of God. Nakikita ko siya tumutulo yung mga luwa sa mga mata niya. Tapos, uh, sabi ko, bakit kaya siya lumuluha? Kasi simpleng mensahe lang ng man of God, talagang lumuluha na siya. Hanggang sa nung nagpastoral na ang lingkod ng Diyos at uh, pinatayo na niya yung mga tao at umawit na po kami, iyak siya ng iyak, iyak siya ng iyak, talagang iyak niya. 
sobrang yakap ng Panginoon na nararamdaman niya. Kaya, nung araw na yon, nung Sunday na yon, talagang nakauwi na po kami yata eh, gabi na po yon kasi uh, na-traffic din po kami sa highway pero salamat sa Panginoon sa pagkat inyata niya po kami. Kaya all in all po, ang gawain po natin sa gimba, hindi lang tagumpay. Amen? Sobrang tagumpay po ang ginawa ng Panginoon sa lugar ng gimba. Amen po ba? Kaya po, orderin nyo yung mga DVDs, yung mga CDs na nire-release po ng mga pastor at pastor natin, mga nag edit po niyan. Grabe, kahit manunood ka lang, i-expect mo matatouch ka sa grabe ng anointing at power ng Lord sa lugar na yun. At ang alam ko, ang man of God, wala din ngayon kasi bumalik siya doon. Kasi nga last week, alas ayaw ko yung pauwin. Huwag mo na kayo umay, umay na po ba kayo? <laughs> Sabi namin, kailangan na po umay kasi pasokan na ng lunes eh. Kaya, eh, ang man of God talaga, mahal na mahal ng mga taga doon, hindi lang dahil sa pogi, <laughs> kundi sa Uh, lakas ng anointing ng Panginoon sa kanyang buhay. Amen po ba? Kaya sa Diyos lamang po ang kapurihan sapagat yung, uh, gawain po natin sa gimba uh, sa paumunan ni Pastor Aroan po doon every Sunday pag wala po ang likod ng Diyos. Talaga namang parami ng parami at patagumpay ng patagumpay at parami ng parami yung ating gawain sa lugar na yun. Amen? Kaya sa Diyos lamang po ang kapurihan. Amen. Um, ang ipapasalaman ko lang kay um, Kasi katulad nga po nang sinabi ni Uh, Kuya Jet kanina sa mga estudyante ko. Isa po ako sa Groom Adweet. At yung nakaraan pong Friday, yun po yung graduation day namin. And ngayon, um, patungo, patungo na po ako ng kolehiyo. At praise God kasi ang sasabi ko lang na hin walang kahit ano na ginawa ko para ma-achieve yung para makagraduate. Ang sabi ko lang po ay dahil lang po sa grace ni Lord kung bahay, paano ako napunta doon at ngayon napupunta na ako sa college at alam ko na mas maraming challenges and trials and gusto ko lang po ipasalamat kay Lord dahil sabi nga din po ni uh, Pastor Elmi kanina sa uh, patotoo niya na grabe talaga si Lord na takita siya at hindi mo madidescribe kung gano'n siya kabuti, gano'n siya kadakila. At gano'n din po si Lord sa buhay ko na hindi mo na lang ma-explain, ma ma ang magagawa mo na lang purihin si Lord. Kasi talagang grabe talaga yung kabutihan niya at kadakilaan niya sa buhay ng bawat isa. Kaya um, gusto ko lang po ibalik natin ang papuri ko sa sinama kay Lord kasi sobrang gracious niya na 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 achieve ko at nakagraduate ako at binigyan niya pa ako ng isa pang opportunity na yun nga, another chapter of my life sa kalayo. Yun lang po. So yun po, same lang po kaya ate Aliya, sasabihin ko. Yun nga po na sabay po kami na graduate. Ako naman po ngayon magpapunta na ako sa senior high school. So panibago na naman po. Siyempre, sabi nila mahirap daw pero yun nga yung high school na nagpasang ko na sa tulong natin Panginoon. Uh, thank you dahil gumagawit ako ng may authors at mataas ng grades ko. Um, yun, uh, yun lang, kapasalamat talaga ako Lord dahil lahat ng ginagawa ko pa sa kanya. Don't you wanna be a part of the kingdom? Come on, 
everybody So much love in the kingdom. 